Hello everyone, this is Abiola David. In this video, I'm going to show us how to automate the reading of Microsoft Exchange emails attached files into the Lakehouse object of the Synapse Data Engineering platform of Microsoft Fabric. The data I'm going to read span from Sales Report 2013 to Sales Report 2016. Now, these are data in my Exchange Outlook. So we can see 2013 to 2016. After we've been able to successfully read the data into the Lake House, we're going to write a single query in the SQL endpoint of the Lake House. And then I'm going to swipe to my Java email address send the sales report for the 2017 into this email and then i'm going to go to the workspace we're going to create refresh the data in the data flow gen 2 which is power query online go back finally to the sql endpoint and execute the query again and by so doing we should see the automation taking place in other words the report for the 2017 will be included in the report so without much talking let's get started now this is the microsoft fabric welcome page so i'm going to go to my outlook again now these are the reports just like i mentioned now each of the mails do contain an excel workbook attachment now let's just see the content of the report 2016.xlsx so these are all the columns and of course we want to aggregate all the data across 2013 to 2016 so i'm going to close this and come back to the fabric now, the first thing I want to do is to create a workspace. So I can click on the Power BI Experience and then click on Workspaces and choose New Workspace. Now, I'm going to give this as data from Exchange. And I can give any name for your workspace. Click on Apply. All right, so we can see the workspace is created. Now, I'm going to switch to the Data Engineering Experience of the Microsoft Fabric and click on Lake House. So I'm going to call this one Sales Report and click Create. So we can go ahead and connect to the data source. So to do that, I can click on this Get Data and choose New Data Flow Gen 2. And that's going to open the Power Query Online where we can connect using different connectors. All right, so this is Dataflow 1 and this is Power Query Online, which is quite amazing. Now, it's a good practice to change the default Dataflow 1 to something meaningful. So I'm going to call this one Sales Data to be consolidated and click Enter to make the changes permanent. Now, I'm going to click on Get Data and choose Blank Query because we're going to use the exchange.content end function to access the content of my email so go ahead and click on the next so what i'm going to do first is to rename this query i'm going to call this yearly sales report and click enter now in the formula bar i'm going to get rid of this and call the exchange dot content m code open the bracket now i need to provide my email address where i will access the emails from the attack me from now this is my email address so you can see abiola at excelgeet consult triple one dot on microsoft.com so i'm going to come here all right so this is my email address now you're going to see credentials are required to connect to the exchange source so just go ahead and click on configure connection Okay, so we're going to see connect to data source. Now you're going to see your exchange and the email address. Now we're going to connect to our organizational account. That's going to be the authentication kind. So just go ahead and click on connect. Amazing. So we can see the different components of the exchange email. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to filter out the calendar, people, task, and meeting requests. So click on the filter or check all of them, check mail and click OK. All right, amazing. Now when I click on this, I can see the different attributes, the columns in the table. Now I'm going to click on this expandable icon. Now we do not need all of the columns. We only need the folder path, subject, sender, and I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to choose as attachments. Now, in other words, when the email do contain attachments. And of course, I'm going to click on attachment itself. So go ahead and click on OK. 
now we can see all the columns so i'm going to get rid of this first i don't need this again and remove the columns after the right click now the first thing i want to do is let's just check the particulars of the sender now the email is actually coming from abiola david which is the name and the address is this yahoo email address now what i'm going to do is to click on this expandable icon because we want to see the names and include some constraints or some filter on the address column so make sure this is checked and make sure if this is checked automatically by any reason uncheck this okay click okay okay so what i'm going to do is to only check the email address that equal to abiola.david01 at yahoo.com so click on the filter drop down and uncheck all of them i'm going to check the only one we need click okay so that's a way of including the constraints or the rule to only return folder that comes from or emails that comes from abiola david so having done that now you can see in the folder path now it can actually point not only to the inbox but including deleted items now in other words if we have this kind of reports deleted you know, delete items it's going to be included if we do not apply filter to the full path so i'm going to uncheck click on this filter button uncheck deleted items so it's going to be looking into the inbox only go ahead and click ok amazing so we can say the photo path is points to the in, um, inbox now for the as attachments now we're going to set another rule by ensuring that only field that do contain attachments are included in our data integration so i'm going to choose equal to now i'm going to choose drop down yes true rather so in the case where we have you know false it's going to be knocked off so make sure it is checked to true and that's lovely now we can even go ahead and specify some keyword so i'm going to choose text filters and i can say that contains now for the emails now it must contain sales report keyword so i'm going to type in sales space report and click on ok okay so having done all that i'm going to grab all these columns hold down the shift key to the as attachment right click and choose remove columns because we don't need them again all right now when i click on this icon i can see the different kind of attributes such as the name of the file extension is in line content type last and so on and so forth now i'm going to check this box and we only need the names name extension and the attachment content itself so we will check that three columns go ahead and click ok we can see the data is now in binary file so this contains 2013 14 15 and 16 that's lovely now we can even further filter down the extension to only pick dot excel is x so just text filters and that contains or we can say that equals to and i'm going to choose dot xl sx from the drop down click okay do not need the two columns i'm going to hold down the shift key and click on the name right click and then remove columns amazing so the last thing i want to do is to convert this binary file into excel workbook and of course we'll promote the headers now i'm going to come to the formula bar and use what's called table dot transform columns m function so i'm going to type that here carefully transform columns open the brackets now make sure the name is accurately typed table dot transform columns I'm going to come here and put in a comma. I want to access the attachment content. So I'm going to open a square bracket and inside double quote, I'm going to point to the attachment content. Make sure you know it is typed the way we have it here. And I'm going to come here, put in a comma. So I'm going to actually use the each. Now the each will actually convert each of the binary file into Excel workbook. Now I'm going to use the Excel dot workbook function open bracket now for the first argument we want to point to the binary so we're going to use the underscore which points to the binary files and then we'll promote at the same time the headers 
So I'm going to come outside there and close off the table dot transform columns and click on this to commit. And then the binary files will be converted into Excel standard workbooks. So you can see we, have, we now have the table. So when I click on this, I can see the name, the data itself, the item, kind, and item. Now I'm going to click on this expandable button. Now we are interested in, I'm going to uncheck all of them name and data now the other attributes are not in necessary so i'm going to click on okay okay and finally we're going to click on this expandable icon and then we can see all the columns so the order date customer name city account manager product price unit and sales amount now again if this is checked for any reason use original column name as prefix please uncheck that go ahead and click okay amazing so we can see we have the data combined and that's lovely i'm going to right click on this name and remove columns and the last thing i want to do is to assign appropriate data types now for this this is date value i'm going to choose date data type and then for the text i'm going to grab the customer name hold down the shift key click on the product column right click and choose change type i'm going to choose text so i'm going to change that to text data types and that's lovely and let's go to the right for the columns such as the price and sales amount i'm going to hold down the control key and click on the sales amount right click and then change type i'm going to choose currency data type and for the unit, we're going to use the whole number data type. So I'm going to click on this icon and choose whole number. And those are the amazing transformative tasks that we're going to perform in this you know, exercise. Now, the beauty part of the Power Query Online is that we can see all the steps in a diagram. So I'm going to collapse the data preview. And this is the amazing steps that we've been going through. That's quite lovely. Now let's go to the data preview and expand or maximize. Now we are done with the transformative work. We've renamed the query. So what in the past, we're going to see the ability to choose the destination here, but that has been changed in the leak out. So we can see so many changes coming up even as time goes on. So the destination is automatically pinpoint to leak out. So we don't need to check that or choose that again. So I can go ahead and choose publish now or later. Let's go ahead and publish now. You can see the data flow staging leak out the data set and we can see the SQL endpoint. And for the warehouse, we can see the default data set, the warehouse and of course we can see the sales data to be consolidated which is the data flow gen tool in other words the power query so if there's a need to go back to the power query you're going to click on this particular name and of course you can see this icon this icon tells you straight away that this is power query online now let's go ahead and see the data in the SQL endpoint where you can begin to write query against the data. So click on sales report. Amazing. So we can see the name of the schema. We can see the name of the database owner and the name of the table is sales, yearly sales report. And then we can go ahead and of course we can even see the data set itself, which is quite amazing. Now let's just write the SQL query, just like you know we said. I'm going to click on new. SQL query and that's going to open the canvas for us to write our query. Now let's just do select star from and um, let's see all the content first. So I'm going to grab this which is allowed and go ahead and click on run and that's going to execute and return all the queries. Now the thing I want to do, I'm going to just click down, uh, let me just move this down so that I can see what is going on. Now we actually want to aggregate or want to see the total sales amount generated for each of the year. So we're going to see from 2013, 14, 15, and 16. So I can say select, we will use the year function to extract from the other date. So I'm going to call the other date underscore, order underscore date, close the brackets, and I'm going to put in a comma. Now, I'm going to use the sum aggregate function, and let's check the name of the sales amount column. So sales underscore amount. 
okay um, i'm going to alias i'm going to call it you know total sales amount click enter now i'm going to specify that it's coming from now i can grab the it's coming from the yearly sales report so i want to group by this year that i'm going to extract i can control c and control v now let's go ahead and order by now let's order by the total sales amount and let's do descending now that's fine let's go ahead and put it in so i'm going to grab this query and click on run amazing so we can see the report actually the name of the file the name of the file in the sales report is actually 2012 so let's say it's really not 2013 so it is 2012 so i'm going to come back here so we can see report for 2012 we can see for 2015 2014 and 2016 which is amazing now i'm going to come to my yahoo and this is the report sales report for 2017 now i'm going to go ahead and click on send i'm going to send it to my uh, personal email address the abiola at exceljetconsult311.onmicrosoft.com and go ahead and click on send and let's check the exchange so let me just refresh we should see it amazing so you can see it just drop in that's wonderful now you can see for now we do not have 2017 included in this report okay we can even just um okay let's just go ahead so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come back to the workspace we created and just like i said this is the power query and we can go ahead and click on refresh now and then we're going to wait for the old step to incorporate the newly received sales report 2017 now that can take some time depending on how voluminous the data is now you can easily just you know click on this icon to monitor the refresh history so we're going to wait for some fee you can see it's going in progress the status is in progress so you're just going to wait for some fill in a moment and then we should see succeeded so we're going to wait and come back to this video amazing so we can see succeeded now it's now been included we can go ahead and close this and create sql endpoint click on that again and then let's see the query that we just executed now i'm going to scroll down here I'm going to scroll down and then i can see the query under the my queries now that's actually stored automatically which is quite amazing i'm going to grab the query again and click on run and then we should be able to see 2017 sales report included now this is quite amazing because we are able to include the data by sending it to the exchange and then we refresh the whole process in the power query online and then we execute the query again and that's it we have 2017 reports so the total sales for 2017 is um 22,462 and i'm going to come to the email and check i'm going to click on this and let's grab the sales amount column control shift down arrow key now in the status bar we can see we have 23,462 which is quite amazing so this is basically how we can use or connect to data in our exchange email get it to the power query and into the lake house write sql against that data set and then include a new data refresh the whole thing and then we see the data being included in the final report so i hope you enjoyed this video if you do share with your friends comment and give a thumbs up thank you and bye for now cheers